I'm going to start, that's right, recording in this computer. <laughs> so while people are entering here, I'd like to thank you all for coming on time. Uh, we wanted to start on time because we want to be helpful and, and you know, respectful with your time. Uh, so today we have three different topics that we are going to focus most of the uh, presentation here. And I'm talking here, me, uh, Miriam Lazarte, and uh, JP, who is our uh, uh, program coordinator, who is going to come, uh, come very, very soon. Uh, our, um, he, he probably is already coming, uh, coming very soon to present the rest of the programs. But in the meantime, I would like to say that LATAM Startups is a nonprofit organization. We are based in Toronto, in Canada. And, uh, you know, we accept the startups from all over the world. So I apologize for the noise, <laughs> but many people are entering at this point. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please just go ahead and put it in the chat box. Yeah. I'll be able to, uh, you know, basically um, yeah, answer any questions or our uh, uh, program, uh, uh, our <laughs> community engagement coordinator, JP, yeah. who's here. Yeah, there you go. Hi, guys. There is. <laughs> Hi, Miriam. Hey, hey how's Hi, it everyone. going? <laughs> good, good. I, I'm in the office and I was, uh, you know, just chatting with one of our founders about uh, a new, you know, um, website that they're launching. So he was asking me about his, uh, for my feedback. That's so, right. Uh, yeah, we have yeah. a lot of stuff going on here in the in the office with our founders and, and community. So, yeah, excited to get uh, this info, info session started. Yeah, so thank you so much, JP, for joining us. And JP is going to talk about two of our programs. I'm going to start with the most, uh, you know, uh, probably most asked program that we have so far, which is the Instead of Visa program. Many people have too many questions about that particular program. And I'd like to answer some of those questions and about the process that we have in Latin Startups. And again, like we are a community of newcomers, uh, mainly Latin American, but we have startups from all over the world. Um, and you know, startups are coming from Pakistan, India, Iran, so many other places that, you know, you will see some changes in our name probably, uh, you know, by, by September or October. Uh, but, you know, it started to talk about, you know, a, the Startup Visa program. This is a very, very, um, a, you know, popular program. People really love to, uh, you know, get insights about this program. The important part to know is that this program is supported by the federal government. Um, yes, we are one of the uh, designated organizations for the Startup Visa program. Uh, what that means is that we can give a little support for startups to come to Canada and develop their uh, business uh, here in Canada. But at the same time, you know, founders are getting into work permits and permanent residence. Um, it sounds fantastic, but the process is not as easy as you probably hear uh, here. So I, I would like to always be very transparent with people when they are coming to our program with this particular goal to enter to start a visa program. So the first thing is that, you know, you see in the website of the Canadian government that the company has to be a technology company that is innovative. Uh, what that means, I'm going to say that in a few minutes, uh, that the co-founders uh, have to be, you know, willing to relocate in Canada, that there are some financial parts of all this, you know, there are some requirements in the website um, of the Canadian government. Between those requirements also, uh, they show that, you know, there are some designated organizations. So you will see that there are angel investors, venture capital and business incubators. So we are in between the, uh, you know, the category of business incubators, angel investors and venture capitals are good also to reach out. Every single entity that is a part of the Startup Visa program has their ways to uh, basically accept startups into this program. So no, because you have a letter of support means that you are going to get a visa. That's the first thing that I want to be very transparent with you. So people that are coming to Canada, you know, sometimes they wanted to, uh, you know, um, Maybe um, thinking that, you know, the letter of support will give you everything. The letter of support is also not a letter. The letter of support is a PDF government document that we have to fill out and make sure that the company actually meet that, the requirements. So if you want to know about this program, the first thing is that if you go to our website, and I always love to show our website because 
uh, you know, is the easy way to navigate is that you have the information right there about the Stravisa uh, path under the acceleration program. So the, what it means is that we don't accept the startups directly into a startup visa program because, you know, the government requirements are in between others for the business incubators that we make sure that the business is actually a scalable technology business under the concept of uh, the Canadian government. And what that means is, you know, to be an innovative uh, company, you have to have intellectual property or you have to have a way to claim intellectual property. You want to know the definition of intellectual property is actually in the website. So you can see there what we mean with intellectual pro pro property, sorry. And one of the things that, uh, you know, is important also to know is that patents or copyrights that doesn't develop right away. We understand that. But if you come at least, you know, with an intellectual property strategy and we can develop that through the program, then, you know, we have a way to actually uh, provide a case for the Canadian government. At the end of the day, it's the Canadian government that decides whether or not you will have a visa. So we are very thankful with the Canadian government for the number of visas we have got, you know, over the time for our startups. Um, so we have uh, work permits and permanent residence. So the other questions that we have is around, you know, how many co-founders can I have, uh, you know, under the Sara Visa program? Because what many people hear is that we have uh, five co-founders, five co-founders, five co-founders. What it means is that, you know, we have up to five co-founders a part of the Sara Visa program. That's the maximum amount of co-founders, but it can be that, you know, maybe five are not moving, maybe are just three, or maybe are two, or maybe it's just one. You know, whoever is moving to Canada is, is the person that is going to be a part of the Star Visa program. So it can be, you know, up to five and their families. The other important part to know about this particular program is that you can get a work permit faster because many people get concerns about, you know, the time frame, actually looking into, you know, a permanent residence process. It's not an easy process again. It's not, um, you know, it's not a super fast process, especially after the pandemic, you know, many cases came behind. So being said that, you know, many people have uh, come to the Stata Visa program through a work permit and the government in particular gave us a great news just, you know, back in June during a collision conference here in Toronto. And is that people that are joining the Stata Visa program, they are going to get three years open work permit, okay? So that means that you can move to the country with your family, you know, and work up to three years with a work permit that will allow you to work in your company or perhaps for other companies as well. So that's a huge, you know, for some of the startups. Now, not everyone has to move right away. Some co-founders, for example, decide not to uh, move immediately. They decide just to wait in their home country to get the permanent residence. And maybe it's just one or two that are going to move under work permit. That is also acceptable. So all this explanation is to tell you that the process to get into a visa program is not an easy process. It's certainly not easy for business incubators like us to designate or to you know, approve cases under a Stata Visa program for letter of support because it comes to a big responsibility in our side. The government is not looking for ideas. The government is looking for companies that are highly scalable. 97% of companies in Canada are small, medium business. So they are not looking forward to have another small, medium business. And that's, it's, it's really important for you to understand. So, uh, the criteria and all that is in here, is in the website. And currently we have open applications for what is the startup visa path. What that means is the first initial path for us to evaluate if a company will become a part of the startup visa program or not. Okay, so this is a three months process. And after the three months process, if you know the board of directors of LATAM startups decide that you have a good case for a Star visa program, we give the level of support and continue working with you for another six months. All cost criteria and how we are selecting the companies is in the information in this website. 
So if you're curious about that, please go ahead and try to apply. You know, if you go to the application process, for example, you're going to enter to what is the GOST application process. And then, you know, we can evaluate your case. And if you have a case that may be interesting for this particular program, then you can enter to this program. If you are not sure, and you still have a lot of doubts, but you still are kind of like curious about, you know, how is to build up a company in Canada, we have something that is called the business life sessions. This information here will give you, you know, um, the access to all these um, topics, right? So we have lawyers, uh, you know, incorporation lawyer, immigration lawyers, uh, we have lawyers in IP, we have uh, sales marketing people, uh, you know, all these people here are going to provide you information and coaching for you to understand better if your company will have a fit in the Canadian market. You don't have to pay us anything to enter to the business live sessions. You can select maybe two or three of them, maybe all of them. Maybe you are not sure that you're going to immigrate to Canada. Maybe you are still in ideation and you just need to know a little bit more about the Canadian market. Then these particular business live sessions are going to be fantastic for you. So it's important for us that you understand that it's not everything you know, just in a square here. <laughs> we are trying to provide the best sources as possible. So you guys have information about the programs, information about the community, and information and actually, you know, knowing if this is going to be a path for you. It's also important for us that you are not going to get broken into the system. And, you know, like if you come to Canada, this is not an inexpensive, uh, you know, way to come. Instead of visa program has a lot of you know, uh, charges and expenses here and there. Which we are talking about a business case. So, you know, you have to evaluate different scenarios. So this business expand, expansion live sessions can help you to do that. Now, applications are open until September 2nd. And I want to open, you know, the uh, microphone or the chat for some of you that may be curious about, you know, the Stata Visa program, or if you may have questions, specific questions about the Stata Visa program, you are, you know, more than welcome to ask those questions. Anyone with questions? Hi, this is uh, actually Farooq from Altmed uh, Hospital. Yeah, uh, hi, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? <laughs> All good, thank you so much okay, for coming just a to quick this one. Uh, we, we are a health tech startup. So mm -hmm. my question is, if one of the founder is already a in citizen Canada? and already in Canada and yeah. want to bring his co-founder and his team from the parent company so he can apply for the same path? Yeah, so we have different programs here, right? If it's, you know, that the co-founders actually don't have a visa and you want to build up the company in Canada, we have right. in the past companies that one of the co-founders is already a citizen or a permanent resident. And basically they're using the program to bring their, their co-founders and of course, continue building the company here. So it's totally possible, right? So no, no problem whatsoever. But you are going to see that there are some programs that are also for newcomers in Canada. Right, right, so those right. that are already with visas that okay. may be, you know, applicable also for your case. Okay, excellent. So you, you're going to show us that path as well during this presentation? Uh, the other program, yeah. We are going to talk about the NIA program as well. Uh, but in particular, for the question in regards of the Stata Visa program, yes, you can have a case, okay? There's okay. no, uh, no problem actually having, you know, a one funder with a PR or citizenship and the others not. You can okay. have a case for that one, but you have to, you know, fill out the application and make sure that you have intellectual property, make sure that you have your financials, you know, things like that. Yeah, because yeah, again, definitely. this is all, government all, all, uh, program. All the qualification criteria has to be met. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for your question. Thank you, ma'am. Thank yeah. you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, so I have some more questions here uh, from Sebastian. If there will be any other batches in the future, of course, we will have those. Uh, so in March next year, we have the next batch. You can select, uh, you know, Sebastian to actually enter to the business live sessions online, you know, not pay anything and just, you know, be a part of that 
process just to make sure that the next batch you want to apply for that one or not you know those are online sessions and there is no problem whatsoever you can apply now for those ones or in the in the next batch if you are making if you are sure that you know Sravisa path is something for you um uh, Amal asked about what is the visa program so Amal I just gave a full explanation about the, the, the startup visa program but I was not sure if you were perhaps not a part of the beginning of this webinar the startup visa program is basically a federal program supported by the um, a Canadian government uh, this is for technology companies that are relocated in Canada um, so these are up. This is this is for up to five co-founders that want to become a part of that program. And again, we are not accessing directly a start of visa program here. Uh, yeah, no worry, Emil. Uh, I'm happy to repeat information here, uh, just quick because the others already hear about that. Uh, but uh, you know, basically, if uh, you know if people want to relocate in Canada, this this is a good program, but it has uh, you know some uh, different kind of um, criteria uh, that you have to pass through you know in order to become a part of this program. So again, the important part is to know that the criteria that you see, the criteria that you see in the government website, it doesn't necessarily match with the criteria that a business incubator has. And the reason why. It's because the government basically is looking into an individual application through a visa program, which is going to tell you, for example, you need a lot of support, you need the financials, you need, you know, English proficiency, you need, you know, you need all these criteria. It doesn't say anything about intellectual property, but this is in our side. This is the government telling us you have to make sure this is an innovative um, uh, company. And for us to make sure that you know it has to come with some intellectual property in between, because it's a part of the letter of support, which is again, it's a PDF document. It's not a letter that we make. <laughs> it's a PDF document that comes from the government and gives us the opportunity to support companies. As you can hear, it's a letter that supports the case. It doesn't make the, ca the case happen. You know, it's the government at the end who does have the uh, ultimate decision on this part. Um, so um, it's a flat fee of $2,500 uh, monthly. Yeah, that's up to five co-founders. And it's not, you know, per co-founder, it's per company. And yeah, it's the same fee during the whole process of the program. Um, the property has to be in Canada or is in another country. Okay. How we can transfer to Canada depends on the uh, original country. Yeah, so Miguel, yeah, so we are not uh, intending to for you to have intellectual property immediately in Canada, but it could be transferred, you know, to the Canadian government. And for that, during the program, we have intellectual law, uh, intellectual property lawyers that can help you basically to facilitate the IP strategy so you know what is like you know, uh, basically having uh, either is copyrights and you need to license, you know, your copyrights in Canada, or maybe, you know, you need to apply for patents in North America, and then you need to see how that is going to happen over the years. And with that is enough for us to know how we are going to work uh, going forward in this program. Um, how many months? Uh, so, uh, Anthony, uh, I mentioned at the beginning also, uh, there are two parts of the process. So basically, uh, you know, we have the um, start of visa program path, uh, which is, you know, the initial part where we are evaluating the company. This is three months. And once it finished the three months, the board of directors of Latin startups evaluate the companies. If they approve them, they give the little support and then the program continue for another six months. Uh, people sometimes get a little bit confused because they think, you know, the letter of support comes after, after nine months or six months, and it's not like that. It comes, uh, you know, after the three months, and then you can process your work permit, you can process your permanent residence while, while you are actually doing the uh, start of visa program. Um, we consider investment in fintech for LATAM. So, Mike, uh, that's very interesting. That's a very different topic, but certainly we have, you know, different type of, uh, you know, network in Latin America. We would love to learn a little bit more about that. 
Uh, I want to respond to the other questions regarding this program just to finalize this part. But if you can elaborate a little bit more about that, um, uh, you know, it would, I'm happy to respond to any other question in that regard. Uh, will you give a few examples of intellectual property? Um, yes, I can give a few examples. Uh, so the total price, this is just make a, a yeah, I believe so is going to be um, 22,500,000 at the end because it's a monthly based program. Uh, replying the acceleration phase is, I don't, I don't know, Eric, when you said 150, what did that means? Uh, okay, <laughs> it's a 15K, yeah, 15K yeah, is the total, 15K. but it's, it's again, it's $2,500 per month, and that's how it works. Um, so, uh, okay, so thank you guys for putting that in the chat, but if you have any other questions about the cost or how it works, uh, you know, uh, Niveen, so early stage startup who recently developed solution does LATAM offer support for filling up patents in North America? We do have lawyers in intellectual property and the lawyers can help on that part. As you probably know, there are, intellectual property is one of the most uh, you know, expensive parts for uh, startups. And we don't recommend that in a super early stage, but once that you are in a commercialization station, you need to protect you know, uh, your product or your service is when you should start doing it. So being said that, I have to say that the government of Canada some, has some grants available and some access to funds for intellectual property, but it doesn't pay everything, okay? So we have connections through different partners, uh, you know, to help in what is intellectual property. Uh, we are already helping, you know, through free ad advisory, you know, from our lawyer. Uh, but for sure, there are some costs related that you, you will have to look at first before, you know, you are actually um, a look at this program. So I hope that helps. Uh, I'm not so sure if anyone else has any other question um, in regards of a Star Visa program, but, you know, to be mindful with everyone else in this call, I will ask JP to continue with the other programs and I will continue chatting with you in the chat box, you know, answering your questions. But JP uh, is going to talk about the other two programs that we wanted to highlight today. One is the new Commerce Accelerator program that is also coming up and the Hamilton Niagara Bootcamp, which is a free program for international startups. So you can join those two and there is no overlapping whatsoever, you know, with one or the other. Uh, so JP, I'll pass the word to you yeah. and I'll continue, you know, answering questions through the chat. <clears throat> Awesome. Thank you so much, Miriam. And yeah, we, we wanted to highlight these programs because the deadlines to apply are approaching. So we wanted to let you know about all the benefits uh, that you can take from them as you sign up or maybe enroll to the to the programs. So yeah, let's let's start with the with the NIA program, which stands for Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. This program uh, has been uh, running for a couple of years now. We started as a, as a pilot back in uh, 2020. Correct me if I'm wrong, Miriam. The first, yeah, the first cohort yeah. of, uh, of, of companies. Well, it's actually in uh, 2021. Yeah. Because of the pandemic. <laughs> the first cohort yeah. of the pandemic, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So that's when we had our, our first cohort. And this uh, program is, is also, it's also partially supported by NRCA RAP which is also a, a federal government institution, which uh, uh, allows us to have this, uh, this program for, for newcomers. So basically it's a, the structure is, is very similar to the start of Visa in terms of you know, the help that we provide, the market validation, you know, the focus groups, the help with the sales pitch and the investment pitch and, and all of that. But the difference is it's, it's for people that are already in Canada and have a status. Is, um, it could be a, a new permanent resident or a new citizen. So uh, it has to be headquartered in Canada, of course, and at least a minimum of 50% of the, of the company should be owned by a newcomer. So it's a PR or, or a citizen. Of course, as the same requirements as our other programs, it has to have a, a, you know, some traction either through sales, investment, or, or grants or number of users. It has to have it has to have less than 500 employees, so it's, a, it's still considered a small medium business. 
And same thing about the startup visa, you have to be willing to pursue the IP uh, strategy here in, in Canada. So the next cohort starts in, in September and it's for six months. So the good thing about this program is that, you know, as I told you, supported by inner CA wrap, it's, uh, it has a very, very, very low cost. It's only $500 for the six months of the program. So it's, it's basically for the help that we provide and all the interesting programming that we provide, it's, we could say it's practically free. You know, it's a very, very small investment for all the you know benefits that you can uh, get from the from the program, uh, and yeah, we have a uh, our our cohort starting in September, uh, and hopefully, if you comply with all of these uh, requirements, uh, maybe I, I know Farouk, you you ask about it. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can you know feel free to ask them through the chat, and I think Anthony, yeah, yeah, I'm just writing actually, so yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think Anthony, you have a, you have a question. Uh, yeah, I have a question about this uh, program for newcomers. Uh, so if I have already in Canada, but I'm not permanent resident, I like have a work permit, and I am tax resident, but not a permanent resident. If uh, am I liable, uh, like liable to apply for this program? Yeah, unfortunately, Anthony, no, because it has to, you know, since it's a government backed uh, program, it already has its requirements very, you know, are very strict. So even though you have a legal status, we need you to have like a permanent status. So it'd be permanent residence or, or citizenship. So I know if you're under a work permit, maybe you, you, uh, you're applying to permanent residence through the different paths that Canada has, maybe the start of visa, maybe the, the express entry. But yeah, whenever you, you get your, your permanent status, you can yeah. apply to this program. So guys, it's also important to know that, you know, during the business live sessions that I pointed out, uh, you know, to you before, uh, we have, uh, you know, the help of a lawyer and she can point out, you know, what is the best program for you? It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, sort of a visa program. So we have startups that have joined, for example, the intercompany transfer, uh, you know, program. Uh, or they have been a part of, you know, Express Entry. Uh, so we have other programs like corporate program, many others, you know, that can be helpful. And um, unfortunately, because this is taxpayer money, you know, it requires uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, I know that uh, work per, work, workers actually, you know, uh, pay taxes, but for this one, it has to be a permanent residence. Um, and this is a federal owned corporation. The, uh, I mean, the one that is funding us. So that's why they are looking for permanent residents. But we get this question all the time. So we hope that in the future, you know, this requirement gets a little bit easier, but right now is what it is. Yeah, and uh, Farouk, he also has a question about the incorporation of the, uh, to initiate the IP in Ontario. So let them provide help and support for the same, right? Yeah, so we do have, again, a lawyer in intellectual property. So what the lawyer is going to do is to help you in the intellectual property strategy. As I said, you know, intellectual property is always something that, you know, it comes with a cost related. We help with the advice of how the intellectual property should work. But at the end of the day, you have to deal with, you know, how you're going to implement it and whether or not you want to hire that lawyer you know, to, to, to do this strategy and all that. Um, there are some funds available for Ontario companies uh, that are, you know, looking into intellectual property and we can point it out, you know, where those funds can be found, but it's again, it's not going to be 100%. That's the thing. So it's important for you to know that, you know, we are going to help as much as we can in that area because part of our mandate we also are funded by the federal government through another institution, which is FEDEV Ontario. And they are also pursuing companies with intellectual property. Uh, so somebody asked me before about, you know, having a direct, um, a, 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 you know, conversation about what is intellectual property, some examples, you know. So if you actually go to our client's website, uh, you know, you will see there some of the companies we already have instead of visa program or the newcomer accelerator program that uh, you know jp was talking about here 
And uh, you know, you will see some of them are in health tech, which require patents, for example, and some others are just ICT that requires just copyrights. Uh, when we are talking about trademarks, that's really very weak. Uh, you know, trademarks are not enough for a startup visa program. What you require to have, a, in particular, what we are looking for is for strong copyrights, you know, that you can license to the Canadian corporation or a patent path. So that's, that's the requirement. But um, in regards of, uh, you know, the newcomer as a mediator program, as, uh, you know, JP was talking here, the information, again, is in our website. You go to programs, Newcomer Accelerator Program, you will see it there. And I think the yep. next one is the Hamilton Niagara Bootcamp, which we are very excited about yeah. this one because it's also third year. So you can share about that, JP? Of course, uh, Miriam. Uh, first, I wanted to end uh, about the NIA program that, uh, you know, since people are already in Canada, we also provide a co-working space here in downtown Toronto. So it's very important for, for founders to be in person and have meetings and, you know, uh, have the one-on-one -on -one meetings with the advisors and the mentors and the mentors and the business coaches. You can do it in person in our office here in, in downtown Toronto. And to answer Miguel's question that, uh, of course, the, the value of the startup visa is 22K uh, for the nine months around that. You, of course, one of the requirements is to you need enough funds to fa to to work your company for a year, at least without revenue. And also, of course, to support your family. Maybe, Miriam, you can answer through uh, the chat box. But yeah, to keep the uh, the webinar going, uh, yeah, let's talk about this uh, boot camp that we're super excited, uh, the Hamilton Niagara. So Hamilton Niagara region is one of the most you know innovative regions in, in Ontario. It's uh, along the innovation corridor that runs through, you know, Kitchener, Waterloo, Toronto, uh, Hamilton, Niagara, Kingston. Uh, you know, we're in the east coast of the of North America, so we're very close to other innovation hubs such as, you know, New York, Boston, Chicago, etc. And yeah, as Miriam said, it's the it's our third edition of the of the boot camp, and it's intended for companies that have a you know same profile as uh, technology companies, innovative companies that are maybe involved in the agri-tech business, in the internet of things, uh, communications, uh, medical tech, uh, and ad tech. Those are the profiles that uh, Hamilton Niagara is looking for. And also one of the advantages of this uh, bootcamp is, uh, of course, free of charge. If you are already in, in Toronto or in Ontario, even better. But if you have to you know, fly from different parts of the world, at least you have that covered. But of course, if you're traveling, you have to, you know, expense for your accommodation and, and flights. But once you're here, we provide all the, you know, transportation to the venues in Hamilton, Niagara. We also provide uh, sessions in our office here for sales, marketing, and other uh, important aspects of uh, starting your business in, in Canada and mostly in the Ontario region. Uh, and also, it's, since it's going to be in mid-October, we have a, a very uh, interesting and important event happening in Toronto, which is the Toronto Economic Global Forum, where investors and economists from all over the world are gathering in, in Toronto for three days. And it's also a, a great uh, place to meet investors, angel investors, venture capitalists, and, and enjoy some interesting sessions about the development of the economy uh, not only in Toronto, Canada, but in 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 the world. So, so far, um, we've 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 had a, a great response from the attendees uh, so far. So, so yeah, as as usual, uh, more information is on the is on our website. And I've seen a lot of interaction in the chat. So, if you have more more questions, people, please feel free to to start um, to keep writing them on on the chat box. And of course, if we run out of time, there's always the chance that uh, you can get back to us in, in our emails, on LinkedIn. We're very active on, on, on every platform. So that's basically what the Hamilton Niagara Bootcamp has to, to offer for you know, scaling tech companies. So uh, for what is the Global Toronto Forum, you know, it's in the second week of October, uh, we normally have tickets for companies that are coming a part of the Hamilton Niagara Bootcamp. 
the forum just happened in front of Union Station and the Fairmont Hotel, which is a very fancy, you know, hotel that we have in Toronto. Uh, it's a great forum. is uh, you know, uh, it's very corporate. I have to say, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a forum per se for startups, but many of the companies that we have in our community are no companies that are new in the market. They sometimes already come with traction from the beginning, you know, from, uh, you know, their home countries. So um, before um, we are going to go here, uh, I have to say that, you know, you have a lot of resources in our website and also in the YouTube channel. You will have testimonials from our startups. You will have, you know, maybe some stories around how they become a part of a Stata Visa program, how they become a part of NIA or Hamilton Niagara Bootcamp, you know, all the programs that we have there and, you know, how they have evolved all over the time. Uh, we have two unicorns in portfolio. We are very excited about them. Uh, so, you know, one, one unicorn is from uh, Brazil, the other is from Uruguay. And we are looking for the next unicorn for those that are coming, you know, to the Stata Visa program or NIA program. We are looking to support the next company that is going to grow exponentially. Is that you? I hope that, you know, some of you will be actually working to become, you know, super big in the market. Um, for some others, you know, that are going to be growing just, you know, eh, enough to become a millionaire, that's good case too. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, again, if you want to know about our clients, uh, please go ahead, look for our clients. They are all in LinkedIn. You can connect with them. If you want to know more about us, you know, in about us in our website, you actually can connect with us, uh, you know, uh, through LinkedIn. Here is my LinkedIn, JP LinkedIn uh, in here. You know, these are our C fractional executives, which are, you know, C level uh, executives that work with our startups. They are super well connected people that help our startups. You can connect with them. This is one of our unicorns, you know, he's one of our business mentors or coaches yeah. in, in this in this part. And we also have all a bunch of uh, full of, uh, you know, mentors uh, that we have in, in our community. You can connect with all of them in LinkedIn. Ask about us if you are, you know, uh, basically curious about our community and knowing about ourselves. We become a part of, of the Startup Visa program in 2019 and since then, we have, you know, received, I think around 40 startups, seven of them have received already permanent resident. Many of them is, are still under work permit and getting work permits, you know, in the last, uh, you know, few months. So again, it's not an easy program. I don't want to picture you a beautiful picture about the Star Visa program. It's a very challenging, very uh, a compelling program, and we are here to help you. And it's our mandate under the government of Canada to help the companies to grow. So we are not here for a visa case. We are here for a business case. Yeah. Okay. So it's important for you to know that part. So anyone else have any questions or shall we just finish here? Because I overpassed maybe eight minutes here. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, Miriam, I, I just wanted to tell all, all of our audience, because I know we have a, a lot of people joining, that yeah. I know maybe they're not ready to, to start any one of our programs right mm -hmm. now, but the idea of these info sessions is that you know and are aware of the programs that LATAM yeah. Startups has to offer. And if you want to keep up with uh, all of our, you know, new events, programs, community partnerships, etc., you can join our uh, newsletter. So we have uh, two times a month. We we send this uh, newsletter with all the updates on the, uh, you know, our programs, events, and etc. So if you want to keep up with that, you can join on the link that I posted uh, a few minutes ago on the on the chat. Yeah. So thank you for that, JP. JP is our community engagement coordinator, so he's always, you know, aware of the events that are happening in the community and in our own, uh, you know, LATAM startups community. So just keep up with us, guys. Um, any other questions? You are more than welcome to ask us. Uh, I forgive me is sometimes, you know, we answer you that we cannot jump in calls is because we get too many emails per day asking about the same program. And that's why we do the info sessions. Yeah. Uh, but I really, really want to thank you uh, for, you know, being here. Miguel, do you have another question perhaps uh, to say um, software development? I can almost. Um, 
Uh, well, you know, Miguel, the thing is that I need, uh, we need to have the details of the company before we actually jump in into a call, because many times we jump into a call and we figure out that, oh, you know, like 30 minutes later that, or 50 minutes later that the company was not a fit for the program. But if you try to fill out the form, uh, you know, you will figure out yourself, this is a program for me or not. And then, you know, we can call you for an interview, certainly if you are the fit. Um, but other than that, really, really thank you everyone for uh, being here today. Um, looking forward to have chats and conversations with you guys when it's the right time. Okay. Thank you, everyone. See okay, you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Uh, bye. Thank you guys for coming. Take care. Have a good day. You too. Take care. Bye.